okay. we're sitting on the couch the other night and I realized something and I was very excited about this. I don't know if either of you remember, but when John and I got married, I had created this, uh, this character that I could no longer do because I had cut my hair short oh, and we no. were sitting on the couch and I looked over at John and I went, Hey, <laughs> hey what's up everybody welcome back to the immature hour i'm mark i'm kelly uh, i'm eric why are we welcoming them, welcoming them back where'd they go they died they died and went to heaven that's tragic whoa it's even worse that they came back Oh, I don't want have religion you, in our time, <laughs> Have you seen time. our country? Oh, that's true. <laughs> like, oh, thank God, I'm done. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this week we uh, our topic is nothing. We don't have a topic. We're just going to bullshit for like 30 minutes. Yay, unpreparedness. We're going to, hey, we're friends this shit. It's not even, it's not even about being unprepared. Like, nothing... It's- it's Sorry. controlled chaos. It's okay. Nothing like happened this week. Yeah, yeah not like, really. Like they had like things that happened in like our local area. Mm-hmm. That's but, like, not fun to talk about. But like about. nothing like really like great talk about. Yeah, I mean, nobody yeah, wants the, to talk about the passing of John Walton. <laughs> yeah. Um, no thanks. That is sad, but it's sad. But um, yeah, well, I'm not gonna say yep. anything. That happened. <laughs> to move on. Um, no, but uh. <laughs> I think the coolest thing I've seen so far on the internet this week has been the bottle cap challenge. I'm a big fan of it. Did you guys watch um, Ryan Reynolds' bottle cap challenge? I did mm. not watch that. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, I wonder if we can find I saw it on Twitter. Um, if we can find it, maybe I can link it or we can link it. Yeah, we'll link it in the to description. The bottom. We'll link so, it to the description below. Basically, it's uh, y'all know how he has the aviator gin. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar? Okay. So it's basically it looks like an aviator commercial Mm -hmm. but in the the tweet it's like hashtag bottle cap challenge i'm like oh this should be good oh jesus so you see the bottle and it looks like he's like someone's holding it low and they're filming it as though the bottle is walking through all these different places and it's like on a journey to find ryan reynolds right (laughs) (laughs) so they show it with all these different like backgrounds this beautiful scenery and so finally it gets to his trailer and he opens the door and he comes out and he looks like he's so excited. He's just like, ah. And he goes and he takes the bottle and he brings it inside. And he does the bottle cap challenge where he, he comes around. His leg comes around. It's in slow-mo. And then he just, bah! And the bo- he kicks the bottle and it just shatters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's exactly like, what you said. And he's like, oh. And then he just walks out of his trailer like, <laughs> I can't believe I did that. It's fantastic. It's so good. That's good stuff. You know, <laughs> someone like, yeah, some UFC people do it. Then they had... I've seen Jackie Chan do it. I saw Jackie Chan's. I saw the Donnie, I forgot his name, but it's a guy from... Um, uh, what's the name of that movie? Uh, he was in Star Wars Rogue One, but he was also in the um, Kung Fu movies that were about Bruce Lee's. I think that's teacher. who I saw too. Yeah, I think I saw his today. He's blindfolded. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't so know that one, yeah. for those of you who don't know what the bottle cap challenge is, it's basically so far it's been like martial artists right it's essentially like martial artists and I, like i've seen one where it's a mom who throws a sandal at the bottle and it, oh, she throws <laughs> a sandal at the bottle and the bottle actually hits the cap My and God. opens it i was like that's great but the goal is to roundhouse kick a bottle and essentially spin off its top like you're opening a bottle with a roundhouse kick without breaking the bottle Unlike Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> that people come up with. Like Jason Statham did it, and Jason Statham did it pretty good. Oh, really? I didn't yeah, see his. His, his, his look like legit look good. I was like, wow, that dude can actually do it. I just want to see Chuck Norris do one. Maybe his was the one I, I saw. Chuck Norris is just too old at this point. No, no. He just needs to look at the bottle <laughs> and go like this. Like, just kind of like give like a really wincing look at it. I was and about to say, this is a podcast. They can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> he just needs to go like this. <laughs> he just needs to go like this. Mark looks sternly. And the bottle cap unturns itself. There you go. It's really funny, like, when you think about all the, the different challenges that have yeah, uh, like the, you know, that have the, been around. The like, Tide Pod Challenge. Oh, God. <laughs> My time hop from 
five years ago. Mm-hmm. It was um, it was like right after the the Marriage Equality Act had passed, and so my time hop was like, you know, everybody's talking about marriage equality, and here I am still doing the the collarbone challenge. <laughs> I was always a little behind. The collarbone collar challenge. challenge. So the collarbone challenge was like five and a half years ago, where basically you take a roll of quarters and you would see if you could fit it in your collarbone. The fuck? And I could just for just for uh, out of yourself. Shits and, and giggles. I'm trying to like see if I can even fit. My, yeah, I was super proud. My my collarbone quarter. Yeah. Oh man, I could fit like a whole wad in there. I did the ice bucket challenge. I did the. You looking at me? You can fit a whole wad in there. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah, you can. That's yeah. hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I did two challenges. I did the cinnamon challenge. Eh, of course you did. Challenge? Which was oh, this when you try and take a spoonful of cinnamon and swallow it. Very dangerous. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah don't because you could choke on that. Yeah, yeah, I'd die. Um, and then I did the the ice bucket challenge. Uh, oh. Sorry, my sound is on. Oh, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I did the ice bucket challenge, and then that was I was it. Um, I did I did the ice bucket challenge two ways. I did, did the I did the one I did the one where you know the normal where they you know they throw the bucket of ice mm-hmm. on you and everything like that. The second way was I, I ordered a six pack of Smirnoff ice. Mm-hmm. And I said I'm doing the ice bucket challenge. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the whole thing about the ice bucket challenge is that it's supposed to raise awareness for yeah. ALS. Mm-hmm. And everyone forgot that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it got so caught up in, like, the, just the, I guess, like, the the, the entertainment home. factor of the videos that, yeah. Yeah. The, have you seen the uh, Mega 64 ice bucket challenge video? No. <laughs> it's like, turn down for what's playing in the background. And, like, they're doing the nominations. <laughs> it's like, I nominate... Casey Anthony. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so funny. John and I actually lived in Orlando. Yes. When that shit happened, oh, I was really? talking yeah. about that. Like I was just talking about that the other day because my coworker has dubbed my cat Casey Anthony because she wants nothing to do with her kittens. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm like, God, I'm gonna get home one day. All the kittens are gonna be gone. It's gonna be like a tarp and some rope and some Clorox and a drawer. It's been so long. I forgot what she did. Is she like she killed her children she, or something? She killed her daughter, dumped mm-hmm. her in the woods. Mm-hmm. Good lord! And then like just went party, like you do. And Jeez. she said she didn't do it, and there wasn't enough evidence to convict her. So really, so she's no, not. She's, she she went scot free. Yep. So it was like it was like an OJ situation. Yep. Except the juice is loose on Twitter. The juice is loose on Twitter. <laughs> and like threatening I, people. I got some getting even to do. Like the worst <laughs> words you could fucking say is OJ Simpson. Oh, he knew that too. Come on. I got some. He's such even like to a do. tease about it. Like that if I did it book. Fuck off. Right. If like, I did that, it. I, I watched the first one where it was like him just saying, I did not. I did not. No, no, no. Chloe. Chloe's not my daughter. Bullshit. No, I just, I just, I Chloe's not my daughter. How old, when, did, when did that trial... When was that trial going on? I was like... Three? 95? 96. 96? Yeah. Yeah, I was four. I was in the hospital for double pneumonia during that. I, I feel... Why. I feel like the 25th anniversary just passed. 25th anniversary? So really? it would have been 94? Yeah, that's where it started. It went on for like two years. Oh, the trial. Yes, 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 yes. The actual chase, I think, happened in 94. 94, and then like the murder happened in like 93. And then we met Kato Kalen. <laughs> yeah, we did meet Kato Kalen. Me and John have a picture with him. I'll, I'll try to see if I can include it in the video. I was going to say, insert photo here. Bing, oh, how, bing. Who, is, who is that? <laughs> Kato Kalen was OJ's... Um, Character so, witness? Not, sort of, not really. Um, so OJ Simpson, when he and Nicole split, he had a beach house that he rented out to Cato Kalen. Mm. And so Cato Kalen was this hippie dude that lived in the back of OJ's house. Oh. That was sort of like a character witness, but also a witness to when OJ got back where he hid stuff. And so, like, he had this hippie dude on state on on the stand, just kind of like, yeah, man, you know, things go really you know, good. But you know, because of his celebrity, now he does karaoke for Comic Cons. 
Yeah, he was like the MC for for Wizard World this year. What a strange life that man lives. Well, like, and the thing is, is I was so young when the trial was going on that, like, I thought that he was a prosecutor. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I had no idea, like, who he actually was. And so my whole life, I've thought that Cato Kalin was a prosecutor. And so we're at Comic-Con and John's like, bro, is that Cato Kalin? And like just it's this this freak out and everybody's like, Oh, I can't go on, I don't know what I'm And I'm like, Whoa, this is a big deal. Like the prosecutor from O. J. Simpson's trial <laughs> is hosting Comic Cons. <laughs> and then like John and Mark are both like, Oh, sweetheart. No, <laughs> no not even no, close. No, that was the hippie dude. That was <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, shit. All right, you guys go take a picture with him. I well, guess. Yeah, we went and took a picture with him, and he was just like all like coked out. It was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sounds lovely. Like majorly. Jesus, that was such a fun con. It was. That was such a fun con. Sorry, I swear I'm not falling asleep. Want, it's been a long couple of days. I want to go to a con one day. Yeah, you, you should, should come with us to Wizard World this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or Big Easy. We'll Big go easy to one con. of them. Big Easy Con. And I see. I'm not. I'm not sure if I'll be able to go to Big Easy Con. Sadly, uh, may or may not. It depends. They so Big Easy Con. This is their first year in New Orleans, and um, I, well, this is their first year ever. Okay, I was about to say. I was like, yeah, the yeah. Big Easy Con. Um, it's their first year ever, and basically, what happened from what I gathered is that there there's a community that's not crazy about Wizard World. Basically, because it's not a local, like they're not local. They okay. they have you know they're they're all over the place. So this community, this nerdy community in New in New Orleans, wanted their own con, and they were like, "Well, shit, we can do this. You guys want more people? We're gonna make it happen. Like we're we're gonna have our own con, and it's gonna be great." And it was it was supposed to be so great. They set it up. They had people come in that yeah, were amazing. Like John Bowerman. They had Felicia Brett, Day. Felicia Day. Brett, Brett Spiner. Spiner. Like, um, oh. Yeah. Is this the con that got pushed back? Yes. yes. So they way had. To, way, to, way to kill the lead. Is. They, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> they had this like incredible lineup. Like stuff. Like there were some people that Wizard World doesn't even really get. And they were yeah. all at once. Yeah. All at Big Easy Con. And I was stoked. And then they announced the date. And it was supposed to be June 1st. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is the same day as Summer Reading Kickoff. So for those of you who don't know, I work in a library. And Summer Reading Kickoff is like our Black Friday. Mm -hmm. It's like the fucking Super Bowl. And we all have to be there. Yeah. And so I I love it. Don't get me wrong. But man, I would have loved to have been at Big Easy Con. So I was really upset about it. And then about two months before it was scheduled to happen, they changed the date to November. That was like super yeah. last minute. It was super, super last minute. It was super minute. last minute. And then the main reason is because so many people were pulling out. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, <laughs> <which> they... <laughs> the look of like shame in your eyes as I made that stupid joke. <laughs> See, they claimed that it was a lot of stuff. Like, I don't remember them saying that anyone wasn't going to come. <laughs> but remember, this is the immature hour podcast. The worst part, wait, quota. The worst part is that I was trying to avoid saying pulling out, and so I said they're not gonna come. So, um, I know, bravo, good job. I am a wordsmith. Um, but that's not what. I, see, I heard that it was just people were asking for a different date. Um. I think maybe the celebrities. I don't know. I don't know what was going on. But either way, it was sort of a dick move. Even though I was excited, I recognized mm-hmm. that there were a lot of people who were upset. Um, so to wrap up this long-ass story, a lot of the celebrities can't reschedule. They can't rebook for no, November. So they're having mm-hmm. trouble getting... So the, as of right now, in. I mean, they've, they're they they're still working on Brent Spiner. Um, I think John, John Barrowman. I think he's out. He's out. Uh, the He's out. a chick from Walking Dead, uh, the the woman who played Lori, she's gonna be there. Oh yeah, she's also in a, an episode of Letterkenny. Sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, and then uh, I, I don't remember her honestly being in it. No, you're thinking of the the woman who played the mom. Yeah, that's Lori. 
No. Lori was the blonde. I thought Lori was the... I'm going to let you lash this out. Hold on. I'll fact check it. <laughs> this is this is Kelly and I's fun thing to do in podcast. <laughs> we do. <laughs> it's like the third time you'll be like, this is what happened. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I mean, at least like... At least no, I'll admit Andrea. when I'm wrong. Andrea was the blonde. Andrea. Yes, you are right. Lori was Lori was the mom. It's the first time I was right on this one. <laughs> Best two that. out of three. It's like Mark nailed it. I haven't though. watched Walking Dead in so long. I, I should know that. I mean, that was She's first Anita season Dick. shit. <laughs> That's her name in the, in the letter, Kenny. Anita yes, Dick. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's amazing. The Dick I family. still need to watch that show, but She's I don't a, have Prime. Uh, huh? I don't have, I don't don't have, have Prime. Prime. It's on Hulu. I mean, I meant Hulu Plus. I don't have Hulu. You don't, um, yeah. So, yeah. So she's going to be there, and Zachary Levi is going to be there. Oh, oh. what? Shazam's going to be there? Yeah, which is cool. I liked him in The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. He's um, also really good in Chuck. Oh, Chuck yeah, yeah, yeah. Chuck looks like show. an interesting show. I just, show. no one is grabbing me. Like, no one is making me want to pay that money. I mean, well, it's they, the first They're cons. not grabbing it's like, you. It's hard they... to get, like, those big. The, but that's the thing, though. Like, they did get those big names. They had oh, yeah. them for June. Yeah. And then they lost them because, I don't know, they had ants in their pants. Well, I don't fucking know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what happens. It happens when you're trying to do something amazing. The reason I can't go is because we already got tickets to the Texas Renaissance Festival. Oh, that's right. I have yet to go to a Ren Fest. We go every year. It was like our anniversary trip. Me and the me and the old Meggers. We might try to go. We go for Scottish Scottish weekend. Mm-hmm. I dress in a kilt. I look we're, amazing in a kilt. We were supposed to go last year. Fantastic. I just want to go back to <laughs> medieval times again. Medieval oh, yeah, times. Wonderful. We had the never best been. seats. Oh my god, best seats! It was so fun. I've never been. Although I did see um, that Danny went. Danny from Game Grumps. Oh yeah! Didn't they do like a power hour? It was him and Aaron? Yeah, they did. Oh, yeah, they did I haven't seen it yet though. Yeah, yeah. That was around the time that he like came out and was like, "Here's my girlfriend." Oh yeah. And I was like, "Oh god!" Like the fans are either going to eat her alive or they're going to like wholly accept her and just like. <laughs> I think that's. I think the latter happened. That's like, what happened. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. And then I was like, "Damn it!" I think the thing was like <laughs> he waited so long to do that. So right like when he like finally came out with it like people were like oh wow this is serious and like was was cool with it tiffany and i had a really long conversation about it um when we went to new orleans was for the uh no no we had panic? a long no we had a long talk about it um so we've been like everywhere together when we went to see ninja sex party mm-hmm. like houston yeah in houston and uh I don't remember what we were doing. I just know that we were like sitting in the window in our hotel, like having this really deep conversation, which it sort of started out about Danny, but then it led into this whole like, so basically it started with us talking about, um, do you think he has a girlfriend? And then it led to, which it was just like a general question. Like, you know, he never talks about a girlfriend. What do you think the deal is? And then it led into this whole conversation of like, how could he like if you think about his schedule Mm -hmm. and that's sort of it it led into like such a deeper like how can anyone who has that type of schedule and that type of life style Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. like keep a serious girlfriend like she would have to basically give up her life to go with him i think it could also it also could be like the same mentality that like people who are in relationships with uh military folk yeah Yeah. deal with you know yeah because they don't even get to see those people for sometimes years. That's know? true. Um, well, yeah, and I guess because I was about to say, but, you know, at some point they're done and God willing, they come home. Mm-hmm. But like, it's the same, though, I, I guess, if you think about it for someone on the road, it would be the mm-hmm. same. At it's some the point, same, the tour ends the and they go home. Well, yeah, it's, a, well, it's the same thing for like, you know, rock stars. Like, yeah, you know, like all the ones that I mean, if you look at how many wives almost like some of like the old classic rock people have had it's yeah. ridiculous yeah. but like the thing is though is that this is so different from that scenario because if you're if you're a rock star and you go on tour mm-hmm. you go on tour and then you get like months off where you don't do anything you get to hang out with your family you record a new album that takes a little time but at least you're home at night mm-hmm. 
and then you go on tour again. Like it, at least there is downtime, but like think of, if you think about Danny Sexbang's life and he went on tour with Ninja Sex Party all over the country, Mm -hmm. then went to Australia, then went to Europe. And in between he's doing, um, game grumps. He's doing game grumps. He's doing star bomb. He's, um, you know, like, recording they're recording like two albums at a time mm. like back Jesus to back Christ. yeah because they because <laughs> they record their own album and they record like an under the covers which under the covers was supposed to be out at the beginning of this year and is nowhere to be seen what so, under the covers volume three three, three? Mm-hmm. yeah um but yeah like I, I was just i'm blown away at how much work like he must never stop i don't oh, i don't yeah. know how ashley does it but I mean, she's usually with him. Mm-hmm. I find yeah, that yeah. everywhere he goes, she's in the pictures, and it's probably like you know at that point, like it's, it's like um like I, I watch this YouTuber. I'm not going to say what it is because it's ASMR, but it's uh, <laughs> I watch this YouTuber. She's got like like three million followers, right? Mm-hmm. And like her and her her and her her fiance, they were having trouble because like he was always working his job. She was always recording at night. It was hard for them to always be together. Well, what he ended up doing was like hire hiring she hired him to be like the person that kind of like is the production manager of everything. Mm -hmm. So like he manages the schedules, the videos and everything like that. So like Mm -hmm. probably he, he, they ninja sex party or whoever ended up like maybe hiring her on to be, do a certain job. That's possible. They can do that. I know like with uh, like Kevin Smith, Kevin Smith hired Jason Muse's wife Mm -hmm. as producer of like almost everything he does now. Nice. So that way, and almost everything he does, Jay's in. Yeah. So that way, they can always be together, and they can bring their kid with them, and their kid can just stay in the hotel room or stuff like that, yeah. and that kind of thing. Make it work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's probably making, going back to you know Ashley following Danny around, he's probably making so much money. Mm-hmm. He's probably just like, queer job, let's go, let's travel. <laughs> like, why not? Yeah. You know, like he's fucking forty. He's like, forty. Yes. Yeah, he looks fucking fantastic. Now. Yeah, he looks great. Yeah. He's 40. I thought he was like 30. Like I thought he was like my age, man. That dude looks fantastic. Nope. So. I thought Aaron was 40. No. No. Aaron's 30 something. He's like early 30s. Yeah, also, uh, happy birthday, Susie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, happy birthday. We're, um, we're recording this on Wednesday, July 3rd. So, happy birthday, Susie. Not that you will ever, ever listen to this. Although, we do have our suspicions that Game Grumps listens to us. <laughs> Because they steal our shit. Uh, and ne- in this upcoming week's episode of Layers of Fear, you will hear why. We recorded it before they did that. Just saying, you'll know what it is. Oh. Did they? Mm-hmm. Did they? What? Eric and I watched their playthrough of PT last night. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I watched that. So. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> so Megan was like, I don't. She was, I remember there was one night. Megan's like, I don't know how you can be, like, scared playing a video game. I don't get that. I was like, really? I was like, okay. So I pulled up Game Grumps' thing of, P- of running through PT. Uh-huh. And I showed her that. And she was like freaking out just watching. I was like, yeah, you're scared, aren't yeah. you? <laughs> that shit Sh- is some... Shit's terrifying. And it's so photorealistic, too, that demo. It's just... Well, I asked I... Eric, I was like, can you win? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, how is it a There's game? There's no winning. Do you just win? Suffering. That's how I feel about Layers of Fear, too, though. Like, when mm-hmm. you asked in the last episode, can you die... And John and Eric are both like, no. And I'm like, then what? Then I know what's that the for point? me, for me, honestly, whenever I asked that question, you all said, no, you can't die. All of a sudden, the fear of the game left me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I was no, like, you can't oh, be hurt. Nothing okay. Hurt you can't you. be hurt. And like John, John said, it was like for him, it's kind of adds a little bit. I was like, no, you can't be hurt. Yeah. It's you like, have to go through this, like but you can't scares. be hurt. It's like going through a haunted house. Yeah. It's going to freak me the fuck out, but I can't get hurt. If they yeah. touch me, I get money. So maybe I want them to touch me. <laughs> touch me I, I don't know if Layers of Fear works like that, though. I cannot <laughs> no, do... it doesn't. Oh, I cannot do haunted houses. Just I've never done a haunted FYI. house. I've done, I've done like a... I can be in them. What is it? Like like a... What do you call it? Like a... Like a trail? Like a fear trail? Yeah, like a fear trail. I've done one of those. Yeah, the one, they have one yeah. in Scott. I've yeah. done that one. But I actually did the 13th Gate one. I did the and, 13th Gate. No, thank you. Yeah, I did 13th Gate in uh, Baton Rouge, and I had to be uh, escorted out. <laughs> um, I may or may not have uh, swung as uh, my initial reaction. Oh. 
and may or may not have hit one of the cast members in the face <laughs> oh, when he no. jumped yes. out at me. <laughs> so, um, and yeah, they had to say, sir, he, you're going to need to leave. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> I'm no. good with this. I have incredibly high anxiety. Like, I can't go th- I can't go through anything where things will jump out at me or scare me. Like I physically start to shake, like to vibrate mm-hmm. and I can't make my way through. So I've got two sort of short stories about how I can't do haunted houses. Um, one isn't really about me though. I went on a first date with this guy in college and he was fresh home from Iraq. Oh, and we went to uh, we went to play mini golf, but it was around Halloween, so they do haunted mini golf. That's not good. And I, we didn't realize it was haunted mini golf. And then he's like, "No, it's fine. It'll be fun." And I'm like, "Okay." And I didn't put any of this together at the time, um, but every single hole that we would go to, he would he would have to be like. Please don't jump out at me. I will swing. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. I am a veteran. I will swing. And no one jumped out at us. I think one poor guy jumped out and he, like, oh, reared geez. back to hit him and then was like, I'm so sorry. And so, yeah. So that's one. And then two, the first time I went to Universal Studios, I went to the one in L.A. L.A. <laughs> where they have the best tacos in L.A. Um, <laughs> so you do that so well. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, they don't have this at the Universal in Orlando because the one in LA is a working studio, it's a working still. studio yeah. Yeah. So basically, they have when you first walk in, and to the left is a haunted house or it's um, Universal House of Monsters, right? Ooh. And so. Uh, my boyfriend at the time, Chad. Yes, his name is Chad. Fucking Chad. It's not a code name. His name is Chad. Uh-huh. Goddamn Chad. Asshole. He begged and pleaded and dragged me in there. And me, I'm like, okay, th- that's fine. Like, I didn't realize it was a haunted house. Uh, I thought that it was like a museum yeah. where they would have like the costumes and some fun facts about like the monsters of Universal. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> You know, like, oh, stuff from Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein and this and that. No, it was a fucking haunted house. And we walked in and they group you just like in any other haunted house. And there's no, like, animatronics. They actually hire, they have real working actors in here. Uh Uh-huh. And they jump out at you just like any other thing except they're just all universal monsters. So you've got a werewolf and you've got, you know, Leatherface and you've got all these... Yeah, and I could not handle it. <laughs> like, I was shaking. Jeez. And he was having to, like, hold me up. And every emergency exit that I saw, I wanted to just, like, push it and go. I wanted to just get the fuck. So I finally made it to the end, and I did okay, but I was just, like, you're visibly in, shaking. Visibly yeah. shook. Yeah, yeah. See, um, whenever I lived in our back to the Orlando days um, I had annual passes to Universal in Orlando lucky yeah wake up roller coasters were fucking awesome <laughs> I curse a lot sorry um, and uh, they every from about the end of September to the beginning of November they do Halloween Horror Nights right and so they turn the whole entire theme park in like after I think it's after like 6pm it becomes it's like after haunted, they close after they yeah. close it becomes like, this giant haunted house they have like 6 or 7 haunted houses and the mm. They have a theme each year. One year it was like movies. Another year, The Walking Dead. One year, they did The Walking Dead. One year, yeah. Uh, Well, the the year that I went, it was um, it was um, movie monsters, you know, like Mm -hmm. uh, or movies. So they had like a Freddy Krueger. They had uh, a a Halloween. They had Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a pansy when it comes to haunted houses. I am straight up. I am a pansy. and uh, my the movie that like t- scarred me as a kid was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So the original. That's so crazy. The original. Yeah, yeah. I have this thing where like if it can't happen to me, I'm not scared of it. 
And I'm like, I don't live in Texas. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why, like, I can. Solved. That's why, like, I can watch those movies. Like, I don't live on Elm Street. Cool, bring it on, Freddy Krueger. <laughs> like, I'm good. What an interesting way to like the thought process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> now, if it's ghosts, fuck that. Yeah, yeah. Fuck ghosts. Hey, but you know what? Like, I ain't afraid of no ghost. I am. I'm very afraid of ghosts. Uh, so I went into the. Uh, <laughs> you got it, didn't you? It took a second. <laughs> I said I ain't afraid of Ghostbusters. No, no, no. I heard you. It was the the really quick like half a second sorry into the microphone that <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> um. Yeah, so, uh, of, of course, I was sort of talking with a girl at the time. and Gross. Um, and I was communicating with a female. Uh, and we, she goes, oh, I really want to go on this one. I was like, okay. Um, well, you know, there's the leather face everywhere, and you hear the mm-hmm. chainsaw coming. Mm-hmm. At the end of it, you hear the chainsaw, and you see this dude, like, jogging towards you. And I'm like, oh. And me automatically went to, run full speed and then you walk and it's like the the towel the, the blankets you know the blankets are everywhere mm-hmm. and every freaking blanket you toss aside there's a leather face right there oh no everyone i'm just like get me the hell out of here run oh. i get down i'm outside of it i'm like <laughs> like freaking panting like in fear and i'm like i'm not going back in there <laughs> And then she was like, this has been fun. Bye. Oh, no, no. She <laughs> laughed her ass off. No, I do appreciate how Universal has a specific pathway that as long as you're on it, no one can touch you. Yeah. No one can scare you. Like, you're you're basically just a, a sightseer at that point. Like, mm-hmm. they, you're not a participant. Alone. Yeah, but yeah. the second you step off of it, you are free game. <laughs> but that's what I appreciate about them. So, I actually... I want to talk about something. So a couple of podcasts go. Oh, this is it's going to be your story in a moment. A couple of podcasts. Oh go. God. Uh oh. You talked about something that you were really fascinated with, and that was bleeding eyes. <laughs> bleeding eyes. Yes, yes, I do remember. I was this. wondering eyes where you were that going blood with dripped. This. Kelly, do you have a little story for us about a real life experience with that recently? You still a fan? I'm not even joking. Like I was thinking about wait. it on the way home and I was like, I need to Google wait. this. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> this is a story I haven't shared with the with the channel. Um, oh my god. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I'm perching up right now like a freaking school girl. Mainly okay. just because like it was so traumatic and I I told it a couple of times when it happened. And I think I'm like I'm okay to talk about it now. Um. Okay, so <laughs> I mean, you don't have to. You don't want to, but it's okay. Know. It's okay. It. It's fascinating. It really is, and like no shit. I was thinking about it on the way home, and I was like, I need to Google this condition. Uh huh. Like, what would cause this? So, uh, let me take you back to the evening of last Friday. Um. Okay. <laughs> Actually, let's rewind a couple of episodes. Uh, I, in case you haven't listened to all of our podcasts, which you should, yeah, don't be an asshole. Um, <laughs> so aggressive about it. <laughs> uh, oh shit! Uh, we we talked about More death folk. stranding. We talked about uh, people who were like bleeding different things from their eyes, and I mentioned how I'm obsessed with bleeding eyes. There's mm-hmm. just something about it. That just makes me go, ooh, tell me more. Because your <laughs> eyes, your eyes are not supposed to bleed. Like, that's not natural. Tears, tell natural. Tell me more, tell me more. Does she bleed from the eyes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I, 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 that's like the fourth podcast in a row with an obligatory freaking Grease oh, reference. Oh, Grease reference. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so They're like Easter eggs now. Yeah, right? <coughs> um, so I have this weird, mild obsession with bleeding from the eyes. And that's why. Just because it's not natural. And it's weird. And it, it shouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't happen. Oh, no. <clears throat> so I was leaving work. Again, like I said, I work at a public library. And I happen to leave early on Friday because I had skipped a couple lunches, whatever. It's neither here nor there. 
So I'm like covering my ass in case anyone I work with is listening. Like I skipped lunch. It was fine. I left at three. Don't at me. So John sent me a picture. He was in the parking lot waiting for a friend to get off work who owed him money for an upcoming wedding. And he didn't, John didn't realize I was getting off work early. So I hopped in my car, drove around the parking lot, parked next to John. Um, so we rolled our windows down and we were talking across from each other and I see this person walk across the street. Hmm. Nothing weird about that. Like mm-hmm. I work People downtown. Walk. There there is a large homeless population that um comes to the library. We never have issues with them. Mm-hmm. They're fine. They just want to like be inside. They want to be on the computer. It it is what it is, you know. Mm-hmm. Not a big deal. <clears throat> They're all super friendly, harmless. It is what it is. So this person is coming across the street. Obviously not very well kempt. Um, short hair, kind of cropped close to the head. Mm-hmm. Uh, wearing a a brown plaid shirt and black pants that were a little too short. Like you could tell that this person had either bought them at like a thrift store or just found them and like mm-hmm. they were just too short for for them. Um, it looked like it looked like a, a young, almost like a, a teenage boy. Yeah. Coming towards us. So again, I didn't think anything of it. We continued our conversation and this person proceeded to walk in between our cars. Oh, that's interesting. And I was like, God, you have a whole fucking parking lot. Mm -hmm. Walk next to another car. Like you can see that there are two people having a conversation here. Mm -hmm. So they come and stand between our cars and stop. Oh. And then that's when I... I hear I heard the voice before I actually turned and looked, and it sounded like a young boy, mm-hmm. maybe eight years old, very high pitched and soft. And when I looked, there was a zombie standing next to me. A zombie? Like a, 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 I a, say a. this with like no. There there is no like joking about this this person was not okay oh no so judging by the joint tucked behind the ear i'm assuming that this was a female because it was clearly an adult okay. with a very soft voice okay. so it had to have been a female i can't imagine any male of that age having that voice mm-hmm. when i turned and looked her in the face She asked me if I had a dollar. And she was just staring. So her pupils were solid black. Mm -hmm. And around the pupils... Like... She didn't have bloodshot eyes. Her eyes weren't red. They weren't veiny. There was a pool of blood around her pupils. Oh, Jesus. And my first reaction was to go, ah! But I couldn't because, you know, I'm wearing, like, my library shirt. Like, I had just Mm -hmm. gotten off of work and, like, we work with the public. I'm, ah. Like, I'm in in community relations. I'm supposed to relate. (laughs) (laughs) And I, I see her and I can't stop looking at her. And I'm terrified. And she is staring at me and she, and I did it to Eric, so now I have to do it to you. Do you have a dollar? And I said, no, I don't have any cash. And I want the audience to know that it was indeed this awkward as you feel right now. Yeah, she she was a little, Kelly was just staring at me as deadpan as possible. And she just kept, after you said, no, I don't, she just kept staring at you like, like that. Please. Oh, wow. No, I I don't have any cash. Can I sit in your car for a minute? Oh, wow. And at this point, (laughs) I want to just be like... (laughs) The window up, right? But, like, I don't know what to do. And, like, John is just sitting there like, uh, um, uh, what do we do? Like... 
And I'm just like, this bitch is going to stab me through the window. Like, that's all I could think was that, like, she's got a knife. She's going to go for my purse. Like, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I was like, inside, I was like a duck. Basically, like I was like a duck on water. Yeah, like I'm laughing, like on the, but that's just terrifying. On the like, outside, I'm like, terrifying. I'm like, this is fine. If it had been any other person, I would have just been like, no, I don't have any money. I'm sorry. But like, it was the eyes. And I couldn't, like, I, mm, it was terrifying. So like, yeah, on top, I'm like, no, this is fine. Everything is fine. But underneath, I'm just like, oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> mm-hmm. And so like, I had to tell her, you know, um, yeah, you know, I'm like, no, you can't sit in my car. I'm about to leave. Uh, but, you know, you can go inside the library. It's open and it's free. And she continued to stare for probably another 15 to 20 seconds. And at which point I'm like, I've given you all I can give. Like, please go away. I'm terrified. So eventually she did walk towards the library. I gave them a call as like a heads up. You hey, know, zombie, just zombie chick coming in. Pretty much. Like, hey, you'll know her. Just look at her eyes. And you'll know exactly who I'm talking about. Um, And so it wasn't long. She ended up going into the library and, and someone did escort her out. So I'm assuming that she either creeped someone the fuck out or she was inside asking for money. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, either way, don't know what happened to her. She wandered back off across the street, assumably back into her grave. And... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. That was like terrifying. That sounds yeah, that sounds creepy. terrifying. Yeah, still a fan of the bleeding eyes. Like now, I'm almost even more intrigued because I'm like, <laughs> whoa. But technically, were her eyes actually bleeding? Like, tr- like slowly. They, they down weren't. With blood. No, there was no blood like coming out of her eyes. It was pooled around her irises. So it's more like I imagine like I'm sorry, like thinking like vampire. So it's more like like just dilated like she probably just took like a crap ton of drugs but like just this like small red mm-hmm. ring it was not small or like her whole entire eye white part of her eyes were red have you ever seen someone that's gotten punched in the eye and it starts to pool like you can see mm-hmm. the blood kind of pooling yeah. in the white of their eyes oh okay but it was around yeah her irises oh, God. that's probably what happened too no she didn't get punched she looked fine like I don't. No, she looked fun. like there were, she didn't have a black eye. It was just pooling. Oh Jesus, yeah. that's a creepy story. It was terrifying. Yes, mm-hmm. that's a terrifying story. So people anyway, are weird people are real weird. People are real weird. Y'all go ahead and keep talking. I'm gonna Google what does that. Y'all okay, talk amongst Google. yourselves. Let's All right, out. so uh, because we're we're getting close to the the end here, because we got about three three four more minutes. Um, Eric, what you been playing, dude? Today I played Doom, the new Doom. Doom, Doom. Uh, no, 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 not Eternal. I wish uh, the the the, the twenty sixteen Doom. I think it's twenty sixteen. Yeah, is that one? Is it is it really good? I haven't played it. Oh yes, yes, it's really good. Um, good for the soundtrack alone. It has a dynamic soundtrack, so like when you're fighting enemies and stuff, the 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 music will like climax at points like when you're like taking down an enemy with like a melee attack or something like that it, it changes depending on like what you're doing in the action is it like is it like rock music or is it like orchestra music or what oh, it's like rock music it's oh, like that's cool it's like <sighs> metal mixed with like a very like industrial type of sound um very heavy mick gordon is, is a fantastic composer uh made a really awesome soundtrack for the game and it's really interesting to um to like look at the behind the scenes of how he made some of the sounds mm-hmm. in the game, um, it's really fascinating. I think for the uh, for like one of the like main songs in the game, he used a chainsaw. I think like the sound of a chainsaw, and then altered it in some editing program to like you know oh, make it have cool. pitches and stuff like that. Yeah, so actually like uh, take it and like make yeah. it an instrument. That's cool. Yeah, it it's super cool. That's um, really cool. Very much about the gameplay and and very little story. You literally wake up on a bed and or like like a like a like a ritual like table of sorts. And you literally like p- you put on your suit and just fucking kill everything. It's very like just kill and destroy and 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 move okay. forward and that's yeah. that's it. It's very okay. very minimalist on the story and it, okay. I love it that way. Yeah, I mean, to me, Doom doesn't really have to have this elaborate yeah. story. Um, 
Um, okay, that's cool. Anything else? That's really... uh, oh, also The Witcher 3, which I, I mentioned the last podcast, but um, yeah, I've been full force on The Witcher. Oh, May, uh, Mario Maker 2. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful game. Eric Absolutely. beat Ross's level. Yeah, I did. I beat Ross's level. It Good took job, me, dude. took me about an hour and 20 minutes to beat it. It's a little time. Yeah, a little bit. It took Ross six hours. Oh, what? Yeah. Apparently, he deleted he deleted it at one point on accident and then had to like redo it and then like it got so bad that he had to call uh gerard the completionist to like uber over to his house and help him beat the level (laughs) it was so hard and he made it himself uh so yeah um so i beat it and then i left a a funny little message hopefully it shows up on the game grumps episode i don't know if it will but that would be fantastic if it does um yeah, uh, I remember watching E3's um, Mario Maker Two Invitational. They did some kind of like uh, they did some races on some some designed levels for. Oh, the, that's the, cool. Yeah, was amazing. Like the the ideas and the the way that the new tools were implemented in the levels was beautiful. Uh, I, I remember after watching that, I, I said to myself, "That's a day one purchase for sure." And you uh, did. You went out like yeah. day one. I don't think I bought it the day, but I bought like a couple days after it came out. And I, yeah, I love it. And it's got a story mode now. Um, there's multiplayer on it too. You can play with a friend. From what I understand, the story mode as you're playing through the story mode, it unlocks more things that you can use if you want to make your own levels. From what I understand about it, I don't. I don't. Maybe I just haven't been paying attention. I don't think so. Um, I'm I'm about s- almost seventy percent done with the story mode. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know I've unlocked some um, some me character shirts. You can like customize your character. Oh, that's cool. Uh, with like little like outfits and stuff, and I've unlocked a couple of things. But um, as far as like, I I thought all the items and stuff were. Um, unlocked out of the gate, but I could be wrong. Maybe I just haven't been paying attention. I haven't designed any courses yet. I gotcha. Uh, that's, okay, that's yeah. probably yeah. I'm okay. very bad at creating levels and stuff. I've never been a Minecraft fan or or um any game where you like build stuff. I just it's I suck at it. Uh, I might I might give Mario Maker a a, a go, but yeah, I you I, like, I just prefer playing other people's levels. <laughs> I apparently have no internet. I'm sorry. You have no internet. Oh, yeah, this room. Yeah, this house does not have good internet. I forgot to tell you that. Um, it sucks. It's just like, eh, nope. Mark, what you been playing? You've been playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Haven't yeah, you? I haven't been playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Um, I still freaking just flabbergasted by that game. How like, like simple? It. How simple of a game it is, but how complex it is at the same time. It's always nice to play a game that you haven't, like a like an older game that you haven't touched before, and it you play it these days and it still holds up oh god yeah it's it was, it's so fantastic um metal like, gear solid is still one of like my all-time favorite oh yeah, games still freaking, yeah. i played it a couple years ago so yeah so that is my all-time favorite game yeah it's so good um no but yeah castlevania has been a lot of fun um learned last night that like you can play as multiple characters. You don't just have to play as Alucard. You can play as, you can start the game off as Richter, or you can start the game off as Actonite. Yeah. Um, whoever by changing is. whoever that is, uh, by changing the name, like whenever you start the game oh, off, like you the, can the name character your character. Name. Yeah, yeah. If you put Richter, mm-hmm. you play as Richter, which the game is like twenty times harder because you know Alucard is like half vampire. Uh huh. Richter is just a freaking human. Oh, uh, it's so like a hard mode. So it's like Do you a hard get different mode. items. Um. No, not really. You start the game off. The only thing is, as opposed to playing with the sword, you're playing with the whip because okay. that's what Richter has. He has yeah. a wh- whip. From what I understand, I haven't tried it yet. Um, but Axe Knight, uh, John says that's like if you want to breeze through the game, play as Axe Knight. So I'm guessing that's like the easy mode. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, I'm ha- been having a lot of fun with that. Um, thing that kind of made me sad is every time I've, I've been loving the game Division Two, but every time I've been jumping in it for the past week. It's been glitchy as hell. Hmm. Made me kind of sad. That's the problem with a lot of these like new multiplayer games that are like weekly update type shit, and there's mm-hmm. always some crap going on. Destiny Two still got huge problems. I watched a game where somebody had this exotic weapon in Destiny Two, and there's a perk on it. I don't know if they fixed it since, but at the time, that gun was so broken that you could literally just just 
shoot for like half a second and the enemy just dies. You'd be like multiplayer matches and just enemies just melt. Damn. Oh, wow. it, yeah, like it's broken. Broken as shit. Uh, stuff like that happens all the time in those games. What are you playing, Kelly? Harry Potter. Oh, the, the, the mobile game. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm loving it. it. Yeah, yeah, I'm having yeah. a lot of fun. It's way better than Pokemon Go. Really? What's different about it? So basically, they give you a bit more of a story in this one. So as you come across different things, uh, these little like text bubbles pop up and you're having like a conversation. And this it's with, you know, Harry in there as an adult. Mm-hmm. And Hermione has like created this group. And you, I don't know, it's just, it's a lot more involved yeah. than it, Pokemon it, it, was. To me, it's, it, seemed, it seemed like it has more of a story. Like you actually have, you actually understand your reasoning for doing what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Opposed to like Pokemon's, just, you gotta catch them all. Yeah, well, this I mean, one's like actually, it's like, hey, dude, you need to get these dudes out of here and return shit back to places it needs to be, man. Yeah. Exactly. Like, oh, these things like disappeared. Now you have to find them, and it's across the entire like wizarding world. It's not mm-hmm. just Hogwarts, you know. So it's it's pretty cool. I'm digging it. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Yay, video games. Yeah, yeah. So, um. Yeah. Did any any luck with the interwebs? No, none. none. I would give you the password and everything. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, here's the Wi-Fi password for Mark's house, everyone. <laughs> one, two. Not that it would matter. Three. No, no. Four. All of our adoring fans are gonna show up at Mark's house and all three of you guys. Bum off three the of Wi-Fi. you. Which bum is off like the Wi-Fi. All Tiffany. Both of you. <laughs> Tiffany and Sam. Somebody's just going to up. Hello, baby. Oh, God. <laughs> Bebe. 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 Jesus. But yeah, so, um, yeah, but I think, uh, I think it's been, you know, it's been pretty good, uh, little podcast, <laughs> man, if we're not really. It's been really good. <laughs> and I was, uh, I was sitting there and saying, it's actually, uh, turned out to be a pretty good little thing, right. you know, the no topics. Kill you. <laughs> the kind of working, you know? Why? 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 Why you want to kill people? Oh, uh, it's just you. What I do? <laughs> what I do now? Not people. No, just, no, just you, you specifically. <laughs> no, no, not people. Just uh, uh, stop you. the podcast. Huh? Uh, I'm your host, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm not the host. Ben uh, Kelly. And uh, yeah, I'm your host, Mark. I'm the host. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <doing it> again. <laughs> Y'all have a week.